Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is all of our jiu-jitsu journeys. I was blessed to have a very uh, simple jiu-jitsu journey. I met Wilson Jr., I think, on the 11th week of me training BJJ, latched onto him, followed him, and just stayed with him. Trained, done some judo. When I got my blue belt, I started doing judo. Okay, I was blessed to have people like Nissa and, uh, and all of the Kent team, uh, Dougie and Dave and Paul, and all of the Cambly team joined on along the way. So we got this fantastic cross training. It's not possible for everyone, okay? Life sometimes gets in the way. People move cities, okay? They move jobs from one side of the city to the other. Also, it's a reality. People fall out with instructors. Not everyone's personality is gel. So I really feel blessed when I look back at my journey that I was able to stick with one team with all of these guys, right? And to stick with Wilson and, uh, and see that relationship through the whole of my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu journey. But I'm also like, the older and more experienced I get, the more I realise how lucky I was. And that, that, that's not available for everyone, okay? Lots of, uh, lots of stuff happens along the way. And so, the next belt that I'm going to give out is for someone that didn't have a normal path through Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu through various different reasons, okay? He, uh, he went through different instructors, different parts of London, okay? Some clubs he jailed with, some clubs perhaps he didn't, all right? And basically, the one common thread that's weaved throughout his Jiu-Jitsu journey is Carlson Gracie lineage, okay? The Carlson Gracie style. He's, I'm not going to name them all, okay, but he spent a lot of time with different people from Carlson Gracie team. And then he arrived with us, I think about 18 months ago, maybe two years ago, and, uh, and basically put his cards on the table and said, look, I've been all over the place. It's not working out for me. Um, and this, by the way, you know, we've got a reputation here. On the internet, this isn't seen as a place where you could just walk in as a coloured belt and come in and we're all going to be friendly, okay? It's not like we are friendly, okay? But we have, well, there's a perception that Castle Gracie team is a rough club and you need to be careful when you walk in there. He came in, he put his cards on the table, he said, look, I've trained with this person, this person, they were all brilliant, but through various different reasons, I haven't been able to carry on because my life has changed, I've been in different areas, whatever, okay? And he said he wanted to come and train with us. And... For that reason, he's been held at Brown Belt far longer than he should have been. Because if someone arrives at Brown Belt, I'm always going to be kind of like a little bit uh, suspicious about motives and suspicious about whether that person is really going to fit in. And all I can say is, is that during that time, I've, I've carefully watched him. And every interaction I had from him when he was a Blue Belt, I've got to say, one of the reasons why we've created this relationship is because I always found him to be a... a a nice, respectful man, okay? Someone who I always felt just had a deep respect for himself, for the people he was talking to, and the artists in general. And so, you know, I've opened the door and allowed him in. And also, the other thing was, he moved from East London right out to West London, and I introduced him to my dear friend and training partner, Nissa, okay, who, who runs Oswa Jiu Jitsu over in, uh, over in West London by Felton. What's the name of the actual area? Ashford, okay, Ashford, West London. And, uh, and this gentleman went to train in the cat. And, and at Oswa, um, there's lots of people who follow the Muslim faith, okay. Um, as I say, me and this have been training together since we were white belts. And I've always been respectful of the faith. And he, he trains with a lot of people with his own faith. And this gentleman also fitted straight into that circle. And I went to train a seminar with Nissa recently. And Nissa said, you know, we're going to do about about this person, you know, he's really good. And I said, just, just wait. I said, how do, how do you feel about him? And, uh, sorry, let me just turn that off. And I said, I, I think he, he needs a black belt. And Nissa said, let's give it to him today. And I said, Nissa, let's just make him wait another six months. Right? <laughs> so we've made him wait another six months, okay, to see how he reacted to that. And he's here today, scrapping everyone. Gave me a really tough round. Um, and the other thing that I must say is he also spent time that I think the significant, the, the significant instructor of his that he would have loved to have trained with more is also a Carlson Gracie uh, lineage guy, okay? But it's based in Newcastle, who's a very, very uh, well-respected ex-MMA fighter called Peter Irving, right? Fantastic, fantastic MMA fighter and jiu-jitsu fighter. 
but uh, Luke was unable to continue training with him because of the distance. And Peter and I had a, a, a conversation uh, whereby I said, look, Luke's come to the club. And Peter said, yes, I know. Luke told me that he was coming to train with you. And I gave it my blessing. And we basically uh, talked about Luke's journey. And Peter gave uh, his blessing for me to be able to award this belt today. Um, now, I don't award black belts to many people. There's not many people on my list, all right? And one of the things is, it's a prerequisite that they're black belt level in, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That goes without saying, right? Of course they are, right? But also, it's a prerequisite that if I phoned one of my black belts at four o'clock in the morning and said, I'm in trouble, whatever the story is, I know that that guy's going to be there within 20 minutes, right? That's the feeling I get from him. I think he'd be there in 15 minutes, right? The other thing is, is that when you give a black belt to someone in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that's it, right? His name will always be linked to my name for the rest of our lives and beyond, right? Every single black belt he gives, my name will be linked to them, right? And so it's a big deal. I want to know that I'm giving it to someone that I don't think will ever let me down and will represent my name and people will go, oh yeah, look, he's a great guy, you know, he won Simon Hayes' black belts, rather than, oh yeah, that, that, you know, being negative, okay? I want to know that the person that I'm giving the black belt to will represent my name as well, if not better, than I try to represent my own name in my behaviour, in the way I conduct myself, in every facet of my life. Being a black belt isn't just for the dojo, it's an attitude, it's a way of life and it's a way that you conduct yourself in relationships, in business, in, business, in confrontations, in the street, okay? And that means walk, being, being a big enough man to walk away, okay? I think that every, all of these facets that I've spoken about, all of these attributes, um, this gentleman has got them uh, in abundance. And so I'm very, very proud after all of this time, these many years of Luke training, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that he's finally uh, going to get awarded this belt. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> so, Luke Loftus. I'm going to award the black belt from me, but with the blessing of Nisar Sheikh from Uswa Jiu-Jitsu and also from the blessing of Peter Irving uh, at Peter Irving Jiu-Jitsu and MMA in Newcastle. Black belt, sir. <laughs> Uh, to other stuff, 
the next thing is to say is this. Our relationship with Oswa Jiu-Jitsu is as deep as a relationship can be, okay? It's tight, it's deep. We consider them a Carlson Gracie team club, okay? We consider your guys' lineage to be Carlson Gracie team as per Nissa, who, as I say, was on the mat every day with me from white belt to black belt, okay? We've done a lot of training together, a lot, a lot, a lot. And he's taught me an awful lot about life, about cultures that I wasn't aware of, and you know, and I've, I'm deeply indebted to him. And I just want to say to all of you Oswa guys that you're very, very welcome here, okay? Sp especially on a Saturday when I'm on my competition class. You can pop down whenever you want to. And we will always now invite you guys to this big gathering that we're going to do every eight weeks, okay? We're going to do this every eight weeks so that we can get this cross-training vibe and learn from each other, okay? And get all of our different weight divisions together to learn from each other. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to uh, the, the Kent team for coming down. Look at the team. But, uh, thank you to Gary and Mick for coming down. Okay. Thank you all for, for attending today. I really appreciate it. It was just great to see. Everyone's getting so much better. Okay. Inch by inch. Okay. Keep pushing forward. Awesome. Awesome. Keep going, keep going. Oh, wait a minute. What direction are we going in? Thank you Thank you for Thank you for Thank you very much.